Hi guys, it's Nicole and today I'm jumping into some ongoing series that are running on my channel. Today being Thursday, it is the Stash Dive into the Summertime series that I'm doing. This is the one that I opened up to anybody that wants to play along, whether it's on YouTube, my Facebook group, Instagram, anything like that. Um, the sort of prompts that I checked off was basically to dive back into a class or event. I'm, dump I'm jumping back into the 6x6 six six paper pad one page sketch class bundle thing that I have sort of slowly been chiseling away at and I keep putting it down. This one is sketch number 19. I think after this I've got maybe two left. A couple I haven't shared because they're sort of in the queue to be edited um, based on what I used with them, but I think I have two left. Um, this one was also one that I had kitted up as like a page kit and took to a crop and didn't have time to get to it. So it's sort of just already been a DIY stash kit ready to go. So that was another prompt that I used. And then the third prompt that I pulled in was to do like DIY embellishments. And in my case, I'm going to mix some pre-made die cuts with um, DIY embellishments using dies a little bit later on in the video. The sketch itself called for one by one inch squares of pattern paper. Now, I really just was not in the mood to play around with one inch squares. I also had taken out my, I have a set of square dies that have some stitching detail to them. They are retired from my favorite things, but they're just a basic square stack die set. I did not have one that was actually like a one inch square. So I pulled the next size up and it was a one and a half inch square. And I did like some eyeball math and figured out that if I switched it to a one and a half inch square, I could get, um, I think it's six or seven squares across or from like top to bottom and still be able to use a six and a, a six inch square piece in the middle. We all know that the ones involving math are not going to be my strong suit. Um, I actually didn't realize that until I got going. So like at this point, I'm just happily cutting squares thinking that whatever the large square in the middle is going to be. I'll just cut it from a bigger sheet of paper. It just kind of was a happy accident that I realized that that opening was six by six. So later I'm just going to go pull a pattern paper that I think is going to work. Now, typically when I ask for suggestions of what you guys want to hear in videos or in the Facebook group and stuff like that, a lot of times I get asked about paper selection. And it's so hard to try to explain because to me, I just pick the ones that I, I like. I tend to avoid the ones that I hate. And then I usually try to have one, two if I can, if I can get it to work, that are multicolored. So something that's going to pull in all of the B sides that I am heavily gravitating towards. I try to find something that's going to be quote unquote multicolored or like an A side would be generally what that's going to be. For me, I'm kind of using that gray, red, and cream plaid pattern as sort of my quote unquote multicolored prompt. And then I just kind of start picking patterns that I like. But in this instance, like, I think I started out thinking that I would want two reds, and then I felt like that was too much. Um, I was actually really enjoying, like, the wood grain and the music, which is more neutral. And then I picked, like, a green, and then from there, I wanted to kind of mix it up a little bit. So I went to some of these pre-printed cut-apart sheets, and lined up my square die so that the image was going to kind of be centered in there. So it'll sort of be pre-embellished in a sense. And then I just kind of start arranging things in an order that I think looks good. And sometimes this is a quick process. Sometimes this takes me two days. It's just 
<laughs> where I'm at with decision. So I cut out all my sort of decision-making fatigue, but here you can kind of see the order that I've got going. One thing that I did focus on was I tried not to have the same pattern in the corners. So like I started with the upper left corner and kind of went clockwise around and just pulled specific colors as I was going around and then filled in with like those neutral colors. Um, I did end up cropping my photo down. The original called for a 3x4 photo that's pretty much entirely inside that 6x6 area. My original photo was a 5x7 from the mall. I cropped it down to where it was just my kids and Santa and the banner with the date on it. And I'm not 100%. I'll have to measure it. Um, I want to say it's maybe like a 4x5 by the time all was said and done. I decided to mat it on some texture gold cardstock, mostly because I couldn't decide on a pattern. And I usually if I can't decide on a pattern, then I will 100% kind of do a cheat and go with a neutral and then like shiny neutral is kind of another thing that I'll do a lot of times. And that can cover anything from vellum to glitter to gold metallic, just something that's interesting but still reads as like a basic neutral um i wanted to because again this is sort of a stash based series i kind of told myself don't go pull white cardstock for your background go find anything so i just started digging through my closet um this background paper is text it's got like some handwritten journaling going on it i think it's from a christmas collection shoot i already don't know what i did with it oh here it is um it's from simple stories um pretty sure it is a christmas collection because like the handwriting thing is like we wish you a merry christmas lyrics but it's from their basics or snap or whatever they're calling it where it's those five neutral papers that match a collection. So this one had like some notebooky type papers on one side, I think, and then like bokeh on the back with like snowflakes, which that was cute too. This was one of those things where I was having a hard time making a choice. I ended up picking the lined side because I knew it was going to be easier to line up all of these little pieces if I had a line already pre-printed for me on the background. And then even though my squares have some like stitch detailing to them when they cut out, I still went ahead and did the hand stitching that's depicted on the sketch. And I kept it in the same areas that Allison has it on on the like sketch sample so when I go to do stuff like this I tend to just keep my adhesive in this in the middle where I know I'm not going to stitch just to kind of help my needle not get so gunked up and then at this point I was like you know what what else do I have in my stash that I'm not touching and I can use I don't think it was necessarily a specific prompt but I found this gold mist that I was heavily influenced to buy a couple years ago and I think I've used it like five times and I wish I could remember to use it more because I actually like it I think it adds some interest to the background and kind of helps it match like I guess like all the the gold stuff that I'm going to eventually add to it um from there I went ahead and started deciding on thread color I pulled out like a charcoal gray kind of color and then I think I'm going to do cream for the center and somebody had asked me this in a recent video about where I got a t-square ruler that had a stitching guide this does not have a stitching guide on it it's just a t-square ruler that I got at Michael's or Hobby Lobby somewhere in like the fine art section and I'm not even looking at like the measurements. I'm just using it as a straight edge and then I'm spacing my holes out to what looks pleasing to me. 
and a lot of that is just trial and error over the last few years of what I like and what I don't like. If you think that you would prefer to have a stitching guide or something that, that has predetermined holes that are going to be spaced out because that could be easier for you. I think the Tim Holtz ruler, both sides of that have holes, one's closer, one's further apart. And then there's, I'll see if I can still find it in stock anywhere. The one that I used to use was like a tacky ruler that just has enough stick to it to kind of hold it down. And then you go and you follow along with the holes that are in the ruler. And I believe that one has a couple different spaced out versions as well. Um, but typically I will just go on like Amazon or Google and I'll type in um, like stitching ruler or stitching guide, something like that, and just kind of see what pops up. It doesn't necessarily have to be for scrapbooking. Um, so from there, I had pulled out some dies that I had bought recently during a Spellbinder sale and had yet to open and play around with. So I just decided, you know what, let's, let's see what I can kind of come up with. Um, I wasn't loving a lot of the like pre-made die cuts that came, well not came with, when I do a lot of like Simple Stories Christmas stuff, I'm actually mixing probably six different collections. I just kind of keep it all together and I dig through everything and I pull out what I like at the moment. I wanted I wanted to play with dyes. I wanted to make my own stuff and sort of not let something that I had recently purchased just keep sitting there and staring at me waiting for quote unquote a perfect project when this project could be deemed perfect as well. So I grabbed some cardstock and just kind of started making cuts. I got, it's a little hard to see here, two different shades of a green, and I cut out some holly leaves. I cut out some like pine looking branches. And then there's another shape that has little like circles on it that you cut out with a different die. And it makes like little, I'm gonna guess berries, which I think is what this one is actually cutting. So with the berry one, I cut some stuff with gold. I think I did red glitter. And then I did a couple passes with some white cardstock so that I could stack the berries and give them a little bit more dimension. I didn't double up the greenery just because I knew that I was probably going to be tucking it underneath layers and tucking it underneath other things. And I personally find it easier to not do the stack die cut method if I'm trying to tuck something. Um, I also went ahead while I was using the red glitter and I cut out a bow. At this point I had no idea if I was even gonna use it. It was just kind of like the mindset of make myself a little pile of embellishments until I felt like I had enough and then I'm gonna bring back my layout and start pulling things in. Um, I think at this point I had already decided that I was going to do Here Comes Santa for my title. I decided to leave off claws because that was too much work and let's face it, <laughs> you got to go with what you are motivated to do. Plus I just really like, I don't know, I like just seeing the word Santa, not Santa Claus sometimes. So not necessarily the full like phrase from the song. And I'm gonna do a layer with the same gold cardstock that I used to map my photo on. And then I did a couple layers of white cardstock behind it. I also used those little tag dies that were off to the side of my desk to cut out from some of the scraps. And this is the point where I just kind of start playing around with things that I like, things that I like the size of, things that I like the color of, and just start testing things out and seeing what I like and what I don't like. And if I like it, it kind of gets to stay there. If I don't, I just sort of shove it to the side of my desk. And this was one of those ones where if I wasn't 100% loving how something was, I didn't glue anything down. I left it jiggling around on my page, which I don't like, but it works for me sometimes. 
I didn't want to have to keep moving stuff around. I didn't want to mess with tape today. So I just kind of go from decision to decision. If I for sure made a decision about something, I go ahead and follow through with it. So I went to my stash and I pulled out some letter stickers to do the here comes. And typically with this style of sticker where it's the little like tiles, I like to have them popped up. I think it just makes them have a little bit more interest and more presence with everything else going on. And I am again using these foam squares that they're not my favorite. I think they're just a little bit taller than what I would prefer and the backing stickers for some reason I struggle to get off but I they live here so I'm gonna go ahead and just use them and try to kind of make an effort to remember to use them a little bit more and just kind of get them used up instead of just tossing them or you know waiting for them to basically lose all their adhesive and go bad um, I am actually starting down in the title cluster because this was kind of the area that I had sort of made most of my final decisions on. Normally I would use like some washi tape or a straight edge a ruler, anything to kind of line up my letters. But in this instance, I am actually, it's hard to tell, but I'm actually using the polka dot pattern on the paper and just going along a row of those to keep things straight. I really like when I was smart enough to pick a pattern that has a straight image on it like that and it tends to work well. This was the point where I was like, you know what, maybe I put the bow on top of the letters. It's a little thick, it's going to stick out in my book a little bit, but I like it. So it's going to it's gonna live there. Went ahead and started gluing down some of the things at the top that I had made decisions on while I wait for the Santa letters to kind of dry. I like to use either a punch or an acrylic block to hold them down while they dry, just kind of something that's going to be a little bit heavy. Sometimes I use my phone. I try not to use my phone if I'm filming because then you guys just end up seeing the reflection of my camera above me. Um, yeah, just kind of went around and started, started gluing things down in these clusters. My photo is actually basically only attached right behind Santa's belly. I just put a little bit of ATG behind it knowing that I was going to be tucking some stuff and then what I end up doing is when I get done filming, I just go through and squirt a bunch of liquid glue underneath things that aren't necessarily super secure and then I just kind of let it dry while I'm doing photos and transferring files and getting ready to work on the video and stuff like that. So I'm doing a last minute check to make sure that those letters are going to fit there. And I kind of felt like that little greenery felt alone. So I went looking for some friends to tuck under there with it. And I finally remembered to zoom you guys in a little bit so you guys can see a little bit better. Um, this was an interesting layout because typically I tell you guys that the embellishing is my least favorite. I actually enjoyed it today and I think one of the reasons was because I was making my own embellishments and I could choose the size, the color, the paper and if I didn't like something it wasn't a big deal because I could just recut it in a different color or completely change my mind. Sometimes if I'm just going with like manufactured die cuts and stickers it almost feels like there's too many choices and just too many things going on. And I think this is why I tend to shop things like dies and stamps is because I can bring in things that would be not boring, but just less detailed. So I ended up using most of the greenery that I die cut because I liked how it looked mixed with the pre-made embellishments. I feel like I explained things really really bad, you guys. <laughs> don't, don't come here looking for embellishing advice because I will tell you time and time again, do what you like. Um, a good way of doing that is basically just don't glue anything down until you mess around with it. Maybe take a, take a couple pictures of different options, send it to a friend, ask them what they like, look at it the next day. I just 
try different things. I know a lot of people don't enjoy die cutting. They don't like the process of making their own embellishments. They want quick and easy. And I'm here for that as well. I personally am just kind of in this phase or season of life where I'm really enjoying die cutting. So I like to show it in case there's others that also enjoy it as well. Plus, I like to show kind of double usage for things. Like a lot of this stuff is geared towards card making, but if I can use it on a layout, I feel like I get a little bit better bang for my buck. So there is my completed layout and some detail photos. Make sure you check the description box below to see who all is playing along this week and all information that you could possibly be looking for will hopefully be linked there. Um, yeah, so until then, I'll catch you guys next time.